Hello, good afternoon. My name is Dr. Binod Nakal from the Medical College of Wisconsin. On behalf of my co-authors, I am pleased to present the results from Cartitude 4, a phase three clinical trial evaluating siltacaprazine autolucel or siltacel versus standard of care treatment in patients with lenalidomide refractory multiple myeloma. Siltacel is a dual binding BCMA directed CAR T therapy. In Cartitude 1, Median PFS was an unprecedented three years in patients with three or more prior lines of therapy. In Cartitude 4, we aim to test Selta cell in earlier lines against two highly effective standard of care regimens in patients with lenalidomide refractory multiple myeloma. Widespread early use of lenalidomide has led to a growing lenalidomide refractory population as early as after frontline treatment, and this patient population typically has a poor outcomes with PFS of less than 12 months. Cartitude 4 compared cell to cell versus physician's choice of either DPD, that is daratumumab, pomalidomide dexamethasone, or PVD, that is pomalidomide, botezumab and dexamethasone in patients with lenalidomide refractory multiple myeloma after one to three prior lines of therapy. These are the first results from Cartitude 4 with a median follow-up of 16 months. Eligibility criteria included being refractory to lenalidomide and having one to three prior lines of therapy. This is the first CAR T study to include patients after the first relapse. Patients in the cell cell arm underwent apheresis, one or more cycles of bridging therapy, lymphodepletion with clodarabine and cyclophosphamide for three days before receiving a single cell cell infusion. In order to avoid bias, bridging therapy was designed to be the same as a standard of care arm either PVD or DPD based on physician's choice. Time from randomization to start of PVD or DPD, either in the standard of care arm or bridging therapy was similar. The primary endpoint was progression-free survival. A hierarchical testing procedures were used to analyze the secondary endpoints. Here we have a patient flow diagram. Of 419 randomized patients, 208 were randomized to cell and 211 to standard of care. This was the intent to treat population for efficacy analysis. Safety was assessed in patients who received any aspect of treatment, and that would be any part of apheresis, bridging, lymphodepletion, and or cell cell in the cell cell arm. CAR-T specific adverse events were assessed in 176 patients who received cell cell as a study treatment. In the cell cell arm, 32 patients had disease progression or, di or died before receiving CAR-T and are counted as PFS events in the efficacy analysis. 20 of these 32 patients received cell cell as subsequent line of therapy. And the outcomes of these 20 patients who received cell cell as subsequent line of therapy will be reported elsewhere. As of November 2022 data cutoff, median follow-up was 16 months. The first patient was randomized on 10 July 2020 and last patient on November 17, 2021. Median time from first apheresis to cell cell infusion was 79 days. When looking at the baseline characteristics, the two treatment arms were well balanced. Two thirds of the patients had ISIS stage one. One third of the patient had only one prior line of therapy at screening. 21% of patients in the cell cell arm and 17% in the standard of care care arm had presence of soft tissue plasma cytomas. Approximately 60% of patients had evidence of high risk cytogenetics, including gain amplification of 1Q. If we exclude gain or amplification of 1Q, around 34% were high risk. 22% of the patients had two or more high risk cytogenetic abnormalities. About 15% were triple class refractory and 22% were refractory to daratumumab. The study met its primary endpoint and significantly reduced the risk of disease progression or death versus standard of care. The hazard ratio was 0.26. The median PFS was not reached in the cell cell arm and was 11.8 months in the standard of care arm. The 12 month PFS rate was 76% in the cell cell arm and was 49% in the standard of care arm. You'll notice the orange coloring of the curves in the beginning of the study. This is to denote that patients on both arms were in the same treatment for the first eight weeks. For this reason, a weighted log rank test to focus on events that occurred after this time period was used to compare PFS in each arm. However, an unweighted sensitivity analysis 
also showed a significant difference in PFS with a hazard ratio of 0.4. You'll also notice that during the time when both arms were in the same trim treatment, there is an imbalance in early PFS events with 22 in the cell-to-cell -cell arm and eight in the standard of care arm. By three months post-randomizing, there were 31 PFS events in the cell-to-cell -cell arm and 27 in the standard of care arm. In the pre-specified subgroup analysis, cell-to-cell -cell consistently prolonged progressive survival in all subgroups, including the key subgroups as one to three prior lines of therapy, patients with high-risk cytogenetics, patients with soft tissue plasma cytomas, patients with triple class refractory disease, and patients with ISS stage three disease. Cell-to-cell -cell improved progressive survival versus standard of care, whether the patients had one or two to three prior lines of therapy we may be seeing better outcomes with cell-to-cell -cell in patients with only one prior line of therapy. However, the data are immature and we'll continue to analyze this at longer follow-ups. In the intent to treat population, cell-to-cell -cell led to significantly higher response rates compared to standard of care. The rate of complete, 85% um, of patients had partial response or better in the cell-to-cell -cell arm versus 67% in the standard of care arm. The rate of complete response or better was 73% versus 22%. The median duration of response was not reached in the cell-to-cell -cell arm and was 16.6 months in the standard of care arm. In the intent to treat population, 61% versus 16% of the patients achieved MRE negativity in the cell-to-cell -cell versus standard of care arm. Considering only the patients with evaluable samples, the MRE negativity rates were 88% versus 33%. Cell-to-cell -cell led to significant improvement in depth of response including higher MRD negativity compared to standard of care. For overall survival, data are still immature. There have been 39 deaths in the cell-to-cell -cell arm and 47 de deaths in the standard of care arm. If you focus on the 176 patients who received cell-to-cell -cell as a study treatment, 99% responded and 86% achieved complete response or better, 72% were MRD negative, and 12-month PFS rate from the time of aphoresis was 90%. Looking at this population allows us to compare the data from CARTG1 in which patients had three or more prior lines of therapy. So how does the PFS of patients treated with cell -to cell in CARTG4 compare to those in patients from CARTG1? Here we have re-baseline the PFS to do an informal comparison with CARTG1, and we can see the rates of PFS in CARTG4 are better than in 18-month follow-up of CARTG1. The rates and depth of response are also superior. However, due to the censoring of data beyond 16 months warrants caution regarding any long-term interpretation. Regarding safety, the data from CARTG4 are consistent with the non-profile of cell to cell. Grade 3 for treatment emergency and adverse events occurred in almost all patients in both the arms, were mostly hematologic and recovered by day 30. The treatment emergent infections occurred in 62% in cell to cell patients and 71% in the standard of care patients. The rates of second primary malignancies were, in, were present in nine patients in cell to cell arm, mostly cutaneous, and about three patients were at hematologic malignancies. There were 10 deaths due to TEAEs in the cell to cell arm versus five in the standard of care arm. The study was enrolling from July 2020 to November 2021 during multiple pandemic peaks. Consequently, there were seven COVID-19 deaths in the cell-to-cell -cell arm. Three of the patients who died in cell-to-cell -cell arm were unvaccinated prior to cell-to-cell. -cell. The COVID-19 deaths highlight the need for strict prevention measures and aggressive treatment of COVID-19 in patients receiving CAR-T therapies, and no COVID-19 deaths occur in the cell-to-cell -cell arm after safety measures consistent with international guidelines were introduced. In the 176 patients who received cell -to cell as a study treatment, 76% experienced CRS, mostly grade 1, 2, and almost all recovered by data cutoff. 21% of patients had CAR-T-related neurotoxicities, including ICANS in eight cases. All ICANS cases were grade 1 or 2 and recovered. Cranial nerve palsies were reported in 16 patients, most commonly affecting cranial nerve 7 and 14 cases have recovered. There was one MND case, which was in grade one. So the CAR-T specific adverse events were manageable with appropriate supportive care and overall lower incidence and severity of CRS, ICANS, MNTs, and some cytopenia were observed with CAR-T4 versus CAR-T1. 
suggesting Siltacil may be better tolerated when used in earlier lines of treatment. So in conclusion, compared to standard of care, Siltacil significantly extended progression-free survival in patients with lanolumide refractory multiple myeloma after one to three prior lines of therapy. The hazard ratio was 0.26, and this is the best hazard ratio ever reported in this patient population in a randomized clinical trial. At one year, 76% of the intent to treat and 90% of the as treated population were progression free and alive versus 49% in the standard of care. This PFS benefit was seen in all subgroups, including the high risk subgroups. Silta cell led to significantly increased rate and depth of response versus standard of care. And in the as treated group, 99% responded, 86% achieved complete response or better, and 72% were MRD negative. Use of Silta cell in earlier lines may lead to improved tolerability. Overall, Silta cell had the potential to be a new standard of care for patients with lenalumide refractory multiple myeloma after first relapse. Pleased to report that the data presented with additional information is simultaneously published in the journal New England, New England Journal of Medicine. And finally, we would like to thank the patients, the families, the caregivers, the DSMB, and the staff members involved. The study was funded by Janssen and Legend Biotech, and we thank you for your attention.